how do we create a healthy relationship with money? I think that should be the conversation. Uh, someone asked me one day to say, you know, when what does it mean when you're broke? I said, well, I don't have anything. And he said, well, that's your zero. Your zero is nothing. Your zero is zero. When you don't have anything, you're broke, right? But he said, your zero should be $1,000. He said, you should save a thousand dollars to where you start getting down to your last thousand. You say, I am what? Broke. Broke. I ain't got it. Somebody asks for money and all you have is a thousand dollars. You're like, oh, I ain't got it. Part of creating a That's healthy a relationship with money is letting money go. Mm -hmm. Letting money go and seeing that your ability to give to others can create impact that's greater than the value of the money that you actually mm -hmm. let go. Right. <laughs> and what, yeah, you got to mm -hmm. really, I, and you're going to explain this, mm -hmm. but I think so many people miss this. Mm. They just think, would of you it like to take out. it? No, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to another episode of the social proof podcast. You guys, my name is Donnie. We're Williams, not all that professional. And I am a professional. How about you? Professionals don't put their sneakers in. The <laughs> <laughs> um, another beautiful day as an entrepreneur. Um, going after a dream, I think, is worthwhile. Mm. I really, really do. I think everyone, maybe everyone shouldn't be an entrepreneur, but I think everyone should do something entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Now, people do it for different reasons, whether I want a financial freedom or whatever. But I think... To have an idea in your head and bring it to life is a worthwhile goal. I agree. I don't believe that everybody should be an entrepreneur. I do believe that everybody should create um, something for themselves that can plan for long term, a, a long term wealth, wealth strategy mm -hmm. or an additional income strategy. So if it's not entrepreneurship, you're investing. If it's not investing, you are leveraging like life insurance policies and things of that nature. Um, I don't think that you have to be an entrepreneur to do things like get you a property yeah. that you can cash flow or that you can hold on to and have in the family. You don't need it to invest in stock. You don't need to be an entrepreneur to invest in stocks, but you do need a means to generate income, number one. Um, generate additional income. And number two, I believe that we all need a way to fulfill purpose, like do something that you're passionate and or purposeful about. And that might not come through entrepreneurship. That's a fact. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think people should just build something though. I don't care if it's build something. You know what I mean? I don't care if it's model cars. I don't care if it's knitting uh, like what's that crocheting crocheting painting in the garage for sure like yeah. do something that you can look at and say i created that yeah and I, I take great pride in it my my journey has been entrepreneurship because i've always wanted to have the money mm -hmm. and it was all about and, and while i was building it i would say things like this is purpose work but it was really to make a whole bunch of money so i could buy drinks I wanted to not have to put in on a bottle. I want to buy the bottle. I want to buy the section. I never actually did it, but that was the goal. The goal was I'm grinding to make money while I'm telling a story. And then I wound up getting some money. And then I started telling people, it's not all about the money. It's about purpose. It's about freedom. When you got the money, did you buy the section and the bottles? No, 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 no. I was past that. But my point is you, you realize you realize after going after the money here's what i'm trying to say after going after the money and making it all about the money mm -hmm. you get it and realize it's not really everything and then you say well money isn't everything mm -hmm. but you only say that after you got the money mm -hmm. but you can only get to that point if you make it all about the money in the beginning so if you're a brand new entrepreneur it should be all about the money hmm I don't know. For me, in the beginning, Tell me you don't agree with your chess. For me, in the beginning, it was not all about the money. Mm -hmm. For me, in the beginning, it was about survival. 
So not necessarily. Which is the money. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You needed the money to survive. No, I needed security. Like I, I thought I needed security. So for me in the beginning, it was about survival and security. I How realized do you get security and survive. Yep, the same way you are happy in other areas. Like it ain't all about the money. So let me finish my thought. In the beginning, for me, it's all about security and um, what was the other word that I used? I forget already. It, survival. So it wasn't about that. It security, about <laughs> security and survival. Like I was really just trying to dig myself out of a rut, and I didn't want to be in a position again where anybody could take anything from me. Right? It was like as long as I made enough to afford my lifestyle and enough to provide what? for my kid, my child. No, it, as, as long as you long made as, enough, what? But there's a difference between... Why don't we want to talk about money today, huh? We are going to talk about money, but there's a difference in the mindset. There's a difference in the mindset of I need to make money to survive and I'm in this all about the money. Even when I, like, I was in it to survive, the mindset was just pay these bills, take care of with this what? child with my hard-earned <laughs> skill set and money. Now, then once I realized I could have an actual career out of my entrepreneurship journey and I started making money and I'm seeing extra when I, the moment I started seeing extra money, it for sure became very significantly about the money. Oh, I so after you got some money, it became more about the money. Yeah, for sure. Oh, after I good, started yeah, coming like head above ground, it started to become a little bit more about the money. Now, when I made the most money that I'd ever made, that's when I realized it's not really about the money, right? And we say that, but if I didn't have the money, it would be about the money. <laughs> exactly. Uh, 100%. When I say that it's not really about the money, that doesn't mean that I want to give it back. That doesn't mean that yeah. I don't want to earn it anymore. It just means that there has to be something significant for me attached to the way that I make money 100%. and what I do with the money. Absolutely. And I, I, I think the reason I'm, the reason I'm saying it like this is it needs to be all about the money for you all right now is because even in survival, the only thing that gets us out, not the, okay, I'm saying this, I'm, I'm leaning towards one side, okay? We're not making, I'm making it more black and white, not gray. The only thing that gets us out is money. Mm -hmm. If you want to eat, okay, you could say it's all about the food, but then you got to go steal it or something. You know what I mean? Like, but it's easier to go get the money. My focus is this dollar amount because I can take the dollar and go feed my family. If I was struggling, it'd be all about the money for me because I know I got to go get this money so that I can feed my baby. But it's almost like as we go after the money, we start getting into like, this purpose stuff and it ain't all about the money. And we use that as an excuse to not grind to go get the stuff so that we can have the things that we want. And we'll take a lower paying job. We'll, we'll take a position where um, we are not, we're not getting what we're worth or whatever, because in our mind, we don't want to go after the money. And for me, it was the numbers. Like I needed a number, a dollar amount. Even when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory, I would calculate how much I need. And it became about that number. How much do I need to eat? How much do I need for rent? How much do I need to get back and forth to work? How much do I need to take care of my mom? And I calculated all that stuff in the number. The number was my only focus. I don't, obviously we want to do it with an ethical intentions, but uh, it was all about the money. It was all about that number because I knew if I got that number, then I could survive and I'd feel good. So I think people need to focus more on the money. Yeah. I think um, it's really difficult to get clarity in anything when you are financially struggling. Yeah. Like Trust period. Me. And so I don't want you to read this message the wrong way, but I do agree with you in that sense. Like right now, go for the money. It's all about the money. And that doesn't mean that at some point you can't go for purpose and you can't go for passion. That also doesn't mean do bad business and, you know, just settle for anything and get involved in anything, but prioritize the money heavily 
because what the money allows you to do is to open doors and create other opportunities for yourself that create room, that makes room for purpose and passion and just fun projects and hobbies and things like that. We have to, there's not a billionaire on the planet, I think, I don't know this for sure, but I think that uh, it's it's not all about the money for, right? Um, I think that people, they, they made decisions throughout the journey of their lives that said, we're going to create wealth for our family for generations to come. We're going to, you know, have a certain level of status and blah, blah, blah. Maybe at older ages, maybe when they're no longer working, it's no longer about the money. But I want you to hear it and hear it clearly. Nobody who has a lifestyle that you guys who are watching this, if you're watching Social Proof, you are an entrepreneurial mindset uh, individual. You are someone who is goal oriented. You are someone who is seeking a life of abundance. So if you are watching this podcast, I don't believe there's anybody out there that says, I don't want the money. I don't believe that there's anybody that you trade lifestyles with. Like the people think about right now, who do you admire? Who are the people that you look up to? Who are you tracking, right? I don't think you'd interview any of them and they say, for me, no, it's never been about the money. I'm confident saying 90% plus of those people believe too, that at some portion of their journey, it's about the money. Let's get the money straight. Let's get the foundation straight. Let's create the means. And then we can become uh, exploratory of other things. I think money is triggering for a lot of people. I think identifying your relationship with money. Yeah. Yeah. It is triggering. Even some of this conversation, there's somebody that probably turned it off because they heard the word money too much. They heard money. They heard go get the money, go do it for the money. Why are we so afraid of saying like, we should figure that out. Like, what is our attachment? Is it church? Is it family? Is it guilt that makes us so afraid of saying, no, I'm doing this for the money. Yeah, I'm showing up to that speaking engagement for the money. I am creating this product that I know will sell for the money. I am offering this service because I'm good at it. I don't want to really do it, but it's for the money. Yeah. Like, as long as we're practicing ethical business, is there really anything wrong with that? Yeah. If we say it's for the lifestyle, we're saying the same thing, but without having to use the word money. So I'm doing this for financial freedom, right? That doesn't sound bad. When I say I'm doing it for the money, it sounds bad, but the only way I can have financial freedom is to go get the money. But but people are really triggered. It could start from uh, even as we grew up where our parents was like, I ain't got no money. Don't ask me for no money. The, I don't, don't ask me for any money. Sticks with people. Because now in their head, it's something about asking for money that is really uh, traumatizing. Yeah. For some people, because their parents kept telling them, don't ask me for any money. When we go in the store, don't touch nothing. Yeah. No, you know, I ain't got no money. Yeah. And I think that it, it is deeply rooted in people's conscious to not ask. They still hear their parents talk about money. Well, and they still believe their current or their old circumstances are going to be their circumstances for a while. Like sometimes people are scared to confess with their mouths like, I want the money because they've never seen the example of having the money. So they don't know that they can do it. Like sometimes you're scared to say something out loud uh, because you've tricked yourself into settling for what you already have. And so if you've already said, you know what, for 30 years, 25 years, 40 years, I've been able to make do on just the bare minimum. It's not all about the money for me. I want happiness. Well, I, I appreciate that. We all want happiness, right? The majority of us here, nobody like wakes up and says, you know what? I want depression today. I want <laughs> I want sadness today. I don't think any of us want that. Some of us create that pathway for ourselves. But money literally, we, we how do we create a healthy relationship with money? I think that should be the conversation. Yeah. Like what are, what are the steps? I didn't always have a healthy relationship with money. Yeah. Um, I abused money, right? And it's because um, it's probably because of a lot of things. I didn't grow up um, in a household where my mom or my parents were constantly telling me, no, I don't have it. I don't have it. I don't have it. Um, I was a pretty spoiled kid. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I got whatever I wanted for the most part. Um, I thought we were rich, but I found out later that we were just middle class and my mom was living above her means. Um, But I I got whatever I want. I had all the clothes, all the toys, all the latest and greatest of the electronics. I had it. Same with my daughter. Even when I was broke, she had everything. And because I was given everything, I felt the need to give my daughter even more than what I had. And so for me, money became a love language. Mm. Gifts and gift giving still to this day remains a love language. Like I do it because it's something that makes me happy. Well, that's a gift and a curse. How happy am I trying to be this month on this budget? (laughs) Right. Um, It's a gift and a curse. And so for me, I had to because money was such a love language, people expressed love for me and appreciation and um, pride in me through gift giving, which requires money. Um, In my mind, you you showed love to people by doing things for them and gifting them and giving, 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 giving. And I had to learn later as an adult, like you can actually express gratitude and love and appreciation in other ways that you don't have to have the biggest gift. You don't have to have the most expensive gift and people will still love and appreciate the small things. So I had to learn how to create boundaries with my money. hundred percent. I think to answer your question, how do we start to improve our relationship with money? I was thinking about it as you were talking And I think the number one thing we need to do is to organize our relationship with money. So if we have, imagine walking into your bedroom and someone takes $100 and just throws all ones and throws it in the air. You got some of this 100 under your bed, some are between the sheets, some are in the drawers, some are in your closet, some are under the toilet. It's $100, right? And as you walk into your house, you see, oh, let me pick up some money but if it's everywhere if like you go to the bathroom you see oh we got some more it becomes frustrating because it's not organized you don't know what to do you don't know how much you have it's just all over the place and i think some people get frustrated because i owe this uh, furniture company over here i got this debt over here i got this student loan i make some money from my job i like i it's all spread i don't know how much i make every month i don't know how much i spend every month i don't know it just seems like i'm short but if you take all those hundred and put it in like a pile on your desk you could see it you could say okay well i got a hundred now i know what to do with it but if it's all if if your whole world is unorganized when it comes to money and you just can't figure out how every time you get a check, a couple of days later, you don't have any money. And it's always short at the end of the month. And then we got to start using credit cards. And that starts to build up. It's so much pressure. You say, yo, I, it ain't all about the money. I'm so frustrated with this stuff mm-hmm. that's all over my life. I can't deal with it right now. So I think the first thing, and this is where I got clarity, was making a list of how much do I need to survive? Mm-hmm. And then at the Cheesecake Factory, we come over with tips. And I just have cash, right? So I just have it everywhere. And then I started making a little journal of writing down how much did I make today? How much did I make, you know, like the next day? Then I've got these three little envelopes. One is for my bills. One is for my tithe. One is for my savings. And I started organizing my money. For some reason, it felt like, and nothing changed. It wasn't like I started making more, but it just seems like I had more because I can pinpoint where my stuff was. I had all of my credit cards in a line, on a board, how much I owed, how much was the minimum, what was the date. And then I started taking some of the money, paying off each credit card, then I was able to strike one out, and that joint felt good. Mm -hmm. If you have five debts, and over a period of time, you like get one to zero, and you strike it off, one of the best feelings I've ever had around money, and that's like paying off something. And then I'm like, oh, if I did it once, I could do it again. And then eventually I don't have a credit card balance. But it started with me just organizing my money. So organizing your money. I'm looking for our rolling notes here on. I got a different um, thing. OK, here we go. Podcast notes. OK. Oh, you got it. Yep. OK, because I had something I wanted to address, but I'll address, I'll address it later. 
It's time to stop running your business like a hustler, like just somebody that's trying to go get some money and run your business like an actual business owner. You know how that happens? Your business hires you. Even though you started the business, the business hires you and you put yourself on payroll. And that business has payroll for other people. Now those other people might be your spouse. It could be your kids. I pay my daughter $12,000 a year because that $12,000 that I pay my child isn't taxed. So that money is either going to go to your child or it's going to go to the government. You decide. I'd rather keep it in my house. My wife is on payroll. You need to run your business like a business owner. Most of you are taking money from your business and you take that money and you pay your house loan. You pay your rent. You pay your car. For one, that kind of stuff will land you in jail. But two, you want to grow and lay a strong foundation for your business to grow on, okay? So go to adp.com forward slash social proof. When I signed up for ADP to get this process going, I had to pay $250 for administration, setup fee, all these costs. I talked to my ADP sales rep and they said they will waive it for you if you go to adp.com forward slash social proof, meaning you can start this process for free. Absolutely free. No catches, no hooks. Go to adp.com forward slash social proof. Now is the time to run your business like an actual business owner. I am on ADP. I do the same thing and it helps my books by tax time. I'm not behind. I'm not trying to get everything because in the process of them making the payroll, they take out the taxes, they structure everything. And at the end of the year, voila, you give that information to your CPA. Okay. Go to adp.com forward slash social proof. One more time, adp.com forward slash social proof. Set it up for free. Let's go. You want to address me? No, not you. It's all right. Let me just, let me just share it. Go ahead. So I, I realized this past week that money is triggering for people just seeing it. So this lady makes a video. So first off, I'm walking through InvestFest. I'm walking down the little aisle and I see my boys, uh, uh, Boone, Smitty, and Ramel. And they have like this fake money. And they're <laughs> shooting like a music video. Here like they got go. their own song. No, let's think about this. Do no, we, no, 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 it's, it's not going to be bad. It's okay. not going to be bad. But they make their own song. And it was uh, Path of Prosperity, not Path of Prosperity, whatever their, their thing is. It was a Fund song. Fund Your Freedom. Fund Your Freedom. It was a Fund Your Freedom song, right? So they got all these fake dollars that I think uh, Rashad said it was like a, a QR code on there. So it was like a marketing thing, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm walking down and I see all this money on the floor. First off, it looked kind of real. So I slowed down and I just looked. And it, <laughs> I saw the little blue strip too. So I like try to, I didn't want to be thirsty as mad people. I try to kick it over just to make sure <laughs> it wasn't real. Um, but they gave me a stack of money. It's like, yo, Dave, we're shooting a vi music video, be in a video. So, you know, me, I'm being silly. I got a stack of money and I throw $1 in the air. They're like, no, you got to throw the whole thing. I'm like, nope, I am on a budget. I'm frugal. <laughs> so I throw it and one goes out. I'm just being funny, right? So anyway, we make this moment. It was maybe 20 seconds we were there. And a lady made a video that said, they're throwing money at InvestFest. They're supposed to be teaching financial literacy, but they're throwing money. And they said, well, InvestFest was all about a party. They thought it was at a strip club. At a, a three-day event, you can't think that it is 20 seconds, the whole thing. It's us throwing money and girls are going to come out. Like, you can't think that. But it was a, a group of us and it was just us and the people that was walking by. Like they got a chance to throw. It was just like we had fun. And I think because it was money in it, people were triggered by seeing money, fake or not, just thrown. Maybe as a symbol and maybe we shouldn't have done it. I don't know. Maybe as a symbol of we don't need it. Money is abundant for us. And it's triggering for other people. So when I saw the video, and I think the only reason they put it out because I was in the video, and it's like, all right, I'll be the draw or whatever. But I'm like, man, we had fun, and I wouldn't not do it again. It's a bunch of us having a good time, 20,000 black people in the event. We are having a ball. And the people that, I guess, you know, people that were commenting didn't even go, so they think, oh, my gosh, three days, you guys are 
Y'all got strippers and investment. No, we, no girls started. Well, Actually, maybe some girls danced. There were some strippers that invested. But finesse brought them on stage. So anyway, my point is, through this conversation, I'm realizing that that being a simple, though we're having fun, that is a trigger for people to say, how could they do that? Yeah. Fake or real? So, so. it had nothing to do with the money. Yeah. The trigger was you enjoying yourself, you letting your hair down, being silly, being relatable. Sometimes people will just simply hate the way other people love you. Yeah. And in that moment, in this clip of the video is fake money going up, having a good time. I'm so thankful that I'm not in that clip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you would have been. I would have been. If you was with me, I would have been. Yeah. I would have been. And I'm joking when I say I'm so thankful that I wasn't in the clip. I don't be caring for real, but they're throwing fake money. Just a bunch of black men, black people. There could have been some women in the clip too. I don't know. Just having a good time throwing fake money. Like you're literally at a conference with 20,000 people. Your job is to stand out. Your job is to create promotional material that will stand out and captivate somebody's attention. Yeah. And if you were throwing up white slips of paper, it wouldn't have gotten the job done, right? right? Everybody who was in that space understood that it was fake money. Mm -hmm. None of the money was redeemable. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, w so we have people who whose job it is to judge, right? Period. They're in the comments. I wasn't going that direction. No, 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 we're not. You're in here, you're wherever. Whenever you're trying to do something great, somebody is going to judge what you're doing. We have to understand that you won't please 100% of people, Correct. not even 100% of people whose attention you have consistently, right? But you have to keep doing what you're doing. Now, because of this video, there's gonna be somebody who thought, you know what, it was a good time. We had a good time, I was even there. Somebody would have seen that video and said, hmm, Maybe it wasn't a bad idea to throw fake money. Right. Maybe this was pretentious. Maybe I should have my priorities. And now you feel bad that you allowed yourself to have fun with fake money. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what? You don't teach your children how to play cashier games. You don't play bank games with your kids. You've removed every Monopoly board game from your house <laughs> because it's a bad idea to have fun with money right. and it's so, it sounds funny but yo this is a real conversation this is having. real Mo people's relationship with money is different you know what mm -hmm. i mean like when w w I, I know growing up i was taught that if it's too good to be true it probably is but out of personal development just being mm -hmm. around different people i realized that some people just got different information wealthy people make money on their money, like there was, I was watching Billions on, not Billions, it was a Netflix series called Explained and the, the conversation was about billionaires. And what he was saying was, uh, it's almost inevitable that a rich person gets richer. It's almost inevitable. It's almost inevitable. That a rich person gets richer. have a bunch richer. of money, they understand that you could just put your money in certain places and it grows, period. Yeah. Right. So we're trying to like get to the ground where we make money, lose money, all that kind of stuff. But they're like, yo, for a billionaire, it's almost inevitable that they never lose it. Mm -hmm. Unless it goes down generations, they squander or whatever. But there are certain there are certain secrets or mm -hmm. um, um, strategies that some people know because they have certain information. Yeah. Right. But from our perspective, it's like. It's, it's just some people, they're just triggered by money because of their relationship and their lack of it. Or, yeah, you know, because of their lack of understanding yeah. about money. And, you know, part of it I get. I get that if you've been That's this real. person who's grown up your whole life and doors have been closed to you because of your financial status. Now you may turn your nose up when it comes to money. Like, and it's not even about the money. It's about the people who possess yeah. the money. Mm -hmm. So it's like you grew up in an environment where people look, the people with money looked at you and judged you for not having money. So now as a child who's being conditioned, and this is what you see all the time, you grow up and you're like, I hate people with money yeah. because of this trauma that's associated with it. Also, you know, there are sometimes uh, money opportunities that you didn't have access to because you didn't have money. So now when you see people get these opportunities, you like these rich people, I hate them. They get all the opportunity. 
the truth is um, wealthy people do often get the opportunity because people want to be connected to more abundance and more wealth. So you have a decision to make. You have a decision to make just like you'd have a decision to make if you grew up in an environment around alcoholics and drug dealers. You have a decision to make. Am I also going to be an alcoholic and a drug dealer? Well, am I also going to be a person who expects the bare minimum financially because I think people who have money are bad people? Are there bad people who have money? Absolutely. But are there also great people who have money who do wonderful things for their community, for the world? Also, absolutely. So you have to choose which side of the fence you want to be on. I want to give a couple of steps, though, to improve relationship with money. And the first thing. Uh, Does my first one count? Organization thing? Remember the money all over the room? I think that would be one. Okay, but okay, let's let's wrap that up in a step. Right. So you said organization. Yeah. Organize your financial picture. Know where every dollar is. Know where every dollar is going. Or do your very best. Know where you're making, know where you're getting money from and know where you're putting it. Organize your financial, every dollar in your life, I'll put it that way. Every dollar in your not, life, you should know where it's at. You shouldn't not know your credit score. You shouldn't not know how much debt you're in. But we don't want to face it, right? We don't want to like sit there, calculate all of our cards, all of our debts and have a number. That, that, was, that was the most freeing thing for me. Okay. So, um, I don't like the way you stated it. It's not clear and concise. Is it not clear? No? No. So, I'm going to clear no? it up for you. You don't understand you. what I'm saying? I understand, but... Y'all don't get what I'm... Hold on. Okay, hold on real quick. No, real quick. Who doesn't understand what I'm saying to you? Y'all are all... You all are viewers. Is there anybody here that doesn't understand? That you should they don't like understand how much because you're asking them with such condescending bad, tone. No, it's not a bad thing. I who? Oh know my God! Who doesn't who does, understand their ABCs okay. at this point? Who doesn't? <laughs> who doesn't understand what I'm saying? Because it, it would be it would be helpful if you tell me so that I understand how to clearly say it. Who doesn't understand? What does that mean? I'll give her a mic. Oh wait, hold on. Give her a mic. And now you're being a little condescending, a little bit. Who, me? Yeah, a little. What does that mean? I didn't say, I said, what does it mean? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, go ahead. I'm gentle coaching. I I get when you say organize your money is like what you were taught, have a budget, you know, your expenses, you know, your income. And by the end of the month, you know where it's going and coming. I get it. Identify your money. Fine, fine. Okay, make it the step you want to make it. Fine. Okay. <laughs> what are we going with? Y'all vote. Identify your money status. Is that it? However you want to do it. That's I think organize. Okay, we'll organize, organize your money. It's all over the place. Let's le- right? let's yes. Let's, just, let's organize your money. Okay. So by that we mean you guys. It could have been misinterpreted. Okay, but because we could grab a mic. Just go with number two, bro. <laughs> like. <laughs> Now, now, of course, I don't feel this way, but when you say organize your money, mm-hmm. someone could say, all right, let's make sure all the face is in the right direction. <laughs> but, I, but I used an example and I said, find out how much debt you're in. Right. Okay, we're just going to move on. Because okay, sure. you get it. And I think no, any, I, I do get it. But I think I any person understands. Okay. Gotcha, yeah, for sure. So, but yo, first off, that's a good thing too. In my networking no no's book, I tell people to make sure your money looks neat. And you don't have balled up. Do- Anybody ever try to buy you drinks and they pull their money out? The yeah, money I don't even want to take balled up money from nobody. Like all <laughs> money is dirty, but balled up money looks despicable. It looks disgusting. Uh, okay, what's, what's the Listen, two? so I'm going to reteach <laughs> this, right? And I'm just letting you know, I'm not using organize your money. I, I don't, don't love care it, how you do it. Okay. But Let's I get it two. because I, I feel like understanding your debt is a whole different step oh in itself. Gosh. Right. OK. OK. Right. Anyway. Right. So number two is going to be create a well. Number two is going to be to create a plan for your money. Mm. Right. Create yeah. a plan for your money, meaning. Understand what you like to do with your money. So, number one, identifying the purpose in which you need the money. 
Uh, what, this is number one in number two. Yeah, well, I'm uh, breaking down what a. number two means. Okay, use A. Because I'm, I'm triggered by you trying to change my number one. So, okay. Are we going to get a lesson out today? You're 2A. Go ahead. I'm 2A. So, <laughs> create a plan for your money. Yes. A, and that is, what is the purpose in which you need money what is the plan that you have to use your money what do you want to do with your money what does what do you want your money to mean to you right so if I'm creating a plan for my money and I know that I want to uh, invest in my first home I want to purchase my first home or I want to put money aside for my child's school uh, tuition or whatever that thing is I want to retire uh, have create a retirement account Create a plan for your money so that we can have a goal set, right? And this is kind of going hand in hand. When you're creating a plan for your money, you're creating really minute, small little goals that you have for your money and what you plan to do with your money long term. And then we can break those things down into shorter term goals. So now when you're creating this plan for your money, you're essentially telling your money where to go. So now that you've gotten your money organized, and you have a plan for your goal, you can say things like, um, I used to use, uh, back in the day before we got super digital, I used to use envelopes. And I think mm -hmm. I had like seven different envelopes for uh, organizing my money. Mm -hmm because I had a plan. So I had the grocery envelope. I had the household bill envelope. I had the gas money envelope. I had the fun envelope. You know, I had the Deja envelope, like what we do on our mother daughter dates. And so maybe you need to go back to those envelopes mentally in your head, whether it's different accounts or whatever the case may be. And you literally planning where each money is going. So you're getting money on a consistent basis, whether that's biweekly, monthly, daily, whatever that looks like, what percentage of that money is going toward these things? Well, first, like David said, you have to understand what your expenses are. So now that we understand how much it costs to live our lives and get by, which I think is a step all on its own, how much does it cost to live your life? Figure that out. Now you're creating these envelopes, whatever that looks like, and you're allocating money toward those envelopes. You've have, you have a plan. And in one of those envelopes should definitely be uh, the extra plan, the extra not curricular, but the extra plan, like the purchase of the home, the purchase of replace a bad car, um, saving for retirement, and you're putting money in it. Now, when you're planning that, once you get X amount of dollars, what do you do with that money next? So if you're saving for a home and you need $20,000, but in this envelope, you've got $5,000 saved, what are you doing with that money to make sure you're not spending it? Does that $5,000 go into... Uh, an account that's online that's difficult for you to access? Are you giving that $5,000 to an accountability partner to hold for you until you have a total sum of the 20? Because surely we're not collecting $20,000 in an envelope, right? We're improving our money, our relationship with money, which means most of us shouldn't be in possession of that much cash available to us right now. So it's very important that we're planning our money, what we want to do with it, and the steps that we're going to plan for along the journey. Um, also include an emergency fund in that. Gotcha. And I'm, I'm, I'm over here. Uh, my third step would be you have to, um, there's a better way to put this, but you got to steal your own money. You have to like steal your own money so that you don't see it. I, I believe for most of us, we're going to spend what we have, right? So when you look at your bank account, that's the amount that you have to work with. Am I right? Well, for a, for a few years, and I'm waiting for this thing to send me this uh, email. For a few years, I've been slowly stealing my own money, meaning I set up a, uh, mm -hmm. a Acorn account. So, and I'll put a link here too. Um, here it goes. I've set up an Acorn account where there's a certain amount of, my money, like, and I think that this is the way it's set up. I'm, I'm actually going to uh, log in right now. But there's a, well, let's say on my bank account, I send $5 a day from uh, one account to a savings account. Mm -hmm. $5 a day. And I've been doing it for years. I also have a setup where whatever amount of money is deposited into my account, a percentage of that goes to a savings account. It's 10%. I have it set up that way. 
So if I get a direct deposit of, like I pay myself, and I pay myself $3,000, $300 goes to the savings account. What's interesting is I forget it. And I just think, oh, wow, I've got $3,700. The $3,700 is what I work with. I also have this, um, I have a certain amount of money, like weekly, that goes to Acorn. And I realize it's these little, it's these little amounts of money that I start stealing from myself because I don't see it and I don't have it and I just work with what I, ha what I have. And you start to find out that you have so much money in savings because you started slowly taking money out of the, the amount that you see and you naturally just don't spend as much. I'm gonna I'm I'm find, I'm gonna give you some true numbers in a second. Honey. Do you wanna stick with steal from yourself? Yeah, I like that. Nope. Uh, you no, steal. you're not. You're not paying yourself anything. You're basically creating like an automatic, an automated deduction. Still, okay. So we're gonna steal from ourselves. <laughs> okay, we're gonna use that. Um, while you're looking for that, I'll move on. Oh, so I'm sorry. I set it to. Uh, I have roundups on, which mm -hmm. um, control how much you that whatever amount. Like if I spend two dollars and thirty eight cents then 62 cents goes to my investing. So yeah. I actually spent $3. So yeah. And I have it set now. Dang, I didn't realize. I have it set to $10 a day recurring. I love that. Mm -hmm. Make it 20. And it's no, it says <laughs> hypothetical invest projection of $987,000 and 36 cents at the age of $78. Hmm. I mean, at the age of 78. Mm -hmm. So, yes, yeah, really, I'm, I'm trying to, like, see how much I put into it because I've been doing this for a long time now. Mm -hmm. And it says that I, if this time for 78, uh, by the time I turn 78, I'll have invested $214,000, but the return would be 772000 Yo, so I want you to think about something based on what David is saying right now before I move on to number four. What kind of extra money do you spend every single day? Like, think about it. Everybody who's in here, go into your bank app real quick. Just go into your bank app. I don't want to see it. Um, this is just for you to see. Go into your bank app and just scroll through the last seven days of activities. Y'all don't have bank apps? You have it in your head? Scroll through the last seven days of you swiping your card or even your credit card statement, whatever you're using, last seven days. Just look real quick. How much unnecessary money did you just spend on that pack of gum, that soda, that fast food when you have when you have food at home? Like, just give me an average number in a week. How much unnecessary money you spend? Thirty seven dollars. You just knew that. OK, who said too much? You do. How much? About how much a day unnecessarily are you spending DoorDash Queen? Like $30. A day? Okay, like 20 A Don't day? Don't try to change it now. It's the 30 at least. <laughs> <laughs> at least. Okay. So imagine you taking just half of that. We're saying $30 a day. Imagine you just taking $15 a day. If you can just spend unnecessarily 30 you can... Take $15 a day and send that over into an investment account. Imagine doing that. Y'all are 20 something years old right now. Imagine doing that for the next 30 years. I don't know what the math adds up to be with compound interest and all that stuff, but that's a lot of money. For one year, that's $1,600. And then that compound, so it doesn't just grow by $1,600. Like, seriously, why can't you create, like, we have this struggle with money, but we're fine spending it. You're fine spending the money, but you have a problem saving and growing the money. You're fine spending the money, but the problem comes with making the money, saving the money, and multiplying the money. Why? Why? Why are we constantly just okay with just spin, 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 and it's easy? Do you think twice about spending that extra $20, $30 a day? You don't think twice about it at all. But when it comes to needing to pay a bill that costs $100, 
do you have a feeling about it? It's a struggle every time. But that same hundred dollars is three and a half days of expenses or three, three and a half days of unnecessary spending. Bro, I have I started looking at my account. I started April 9th, 2020. And again, it takes the money and invests it into stocks in a portfolio. Um, I've now I have an investment account of twenty six thousand two hundred three dollars and twenty eight cents. I love that. Isn't that incredible? That is incredible. The money that I never I would. How much? This twenty six thousand. That's ten dollars a day. I would have never saw it. Ten dollars a day. It started at five dollars a day. Yeah. Now it's ten dollars a day. Twenty six thousand dollars in three years. No, this no. is the same. Twenty six grand. That was a projection of how yeah. many more years? Like forty more years. Yeah. But twenty six thousand dollars in three years. Like, just think about where you were in twenty twenty. Uh, we're three years later. What could you do today with a lump sum of twenty six thousand dollars? How could your life improve in just three years? Because I don't know about y'all, but it felt like twenty twenty was just yesterday. Right. Like it, it just flew by, right? Yeah, and the, the 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 biggest point in this, y'all, is if you had have started like having money come from your account. Let's just say ten percent is going, you know, from your account, or five dollars a day, or whatever. Over the next few years, even if even if it's not making money in the stock market, that money that you have at the end of four years, five years at $5 a day will be a whole bunch of money that you would have spent on stupid stuff that you wouldn't even seen it. Cause you're not going to miss $5 coming out of your account for the mm -hmm. most part, right? You're not going to miss a dollar. If it was a dollar coming out of your account every single day, that's $365 in 10 years. It's not a whole lot of money. It's $3,600. But imagine having $3,600 that you would have, you would have never saw. So, like, y'all need to set that up. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna send y'all this referral because I get a little fee. And you know what's what's crazy is you, got you have to find out where in your life you lost the money mindset because mm -hmm. my daughter actually got me involved in having an interest of investing via. I think back at that time it was Acorn and Robinhood. Really? Yeah, at 13 years old, they had like a little Robin Hood at 13. She was using my name to, you know, because she was 13 years old. But I had the I had the account set up, you know, in my name and her and her friends at school. This guy at school, you were in ninth grade or something like that. All throughout high school, they had their little investment club. And, you know, they're excited. They're watching stocks and doing all this stuff. And I would log into the app because I had access to it on my phone. And I'm like, okay, little $500. I see you making some money. Yeah, I'll turn on your airdrop. And that really time. made me interested in wanting to grow my own stock portfolio. So now that I hear her say things like I frivolously spend $30 a day and I know that she's not, you're not investing in a stock account anymore, are you? Like, at what point do you lose that? I accept this. Little Let me um, give her a mic. You got it. Do you have air Do you have acorns? Yeah, I do. Dude, I have acorn. I got you. Y'all gonna get this. Um, <laughs> it's not coming through right, though. It's not coming through It should right. be a link. Is it a link? What is it, y'all? Y'all. Oh, press notes. Save it as a note. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, let me get on to oh, Mike. All right. We got a camera over here. All right. So I want to know, this is my daughter who's speaking. You started investing on your own without any coercion from me at 13 years old. You were teaching me how to use the Robin Hood app. How do you lose that now and go from such a great skill at 13 years old to just nothing? Um, it wasn't on purpose. Honestly, I think what happened was I wanted my own account, so I kind of just stopped going to yours. And mm. um, I wanted my own, and then I eventually never, I went to school, I went to college, and never did it. So mm -hmm. that's what happened. So college is what caused you to not do it. Is it because you became a broke college kid, or? Mm -hmm. No. I just never went back to it. I wasn't focused on it. Mm. Are you still sports betting? Sometimes. You mm -hmm. sports bet? I do. That's mm -hmm. Do you make money? I do. And what do you do with that money? 
Spend it. <laughs> yeah. Spend it. Definitely. I'm about to partner with you on your finances. Brianna. <laughs> Are you investing in stocks? Do you have a stock portfolio? Yeah. You do? What's in it? Like, what stocks are you invested in? Um, I think just a generic Apple. Microsoft. Are you investing or is your father investing for you? I invest, but I take the advice. From your father? Correct. Okay. All right. I am about to partner with both of you guys on your finances because both of these girls are my family. They're also my team. And we are creating smart money habits. Now, I will say... Um, neither one of them are big shoppers. They don't do like a whole lot of expensive shopping like I do. So they're kind of already ahead of the game. But just holding on to money and not multiplying it is also a bad habit. Yeah. We're partners in finances. Are we clear? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. Clear? Right. Okay. All right. <laughs> let me move on to number four. So you guys know that I'm the we didn't. We were still on your topic. No, we was on three. Yes, three. you said steal from yourself. That was oh, number three. Oh. Number four. Also, don't be expanding on my. Oh, you don't want to. You don't want to go deep on your on your thoughts. <laughs> no, that was okay. good. That was good. Number four. I am the self care queen, mm -hmm. so we cannot not have financial self care. Mm -hmm. So we need a financial self care plan. And what do I mean by that? I want you to create healthy conversations around money that inspire you and make you feel good, whether you have the money today or not, whether you are in a financial position to accomplish the goals or not. I want you to get around a group of people or a professional. You can get around a group of people who are thinking like you. Like for me, it wasn't a professional because I couldn't afford to pay a professional. Mm -hmm. Right. And I didn't have professional financial educators in my in my circle. But I was able to get around people who thought like me, who was on the same track, who identified something is wrong here, guys. We're going to continue to repeat this cycle unless we do something different. We all thought that. So we'd sit around and we'd exchange ideas about what we can do with our monies individually and what we could do with our money collectively. So I want us to start practicing some financial self-care. So that looks like number one, finding someone or a community, a person or a community where you can have fun, healthy financial conversations. And the result of these conversations should be conversations that validate what you are doing to grow your money mindset or empower you and inspire you to want to do more with your money, right? Now, if you are also in position or you have access, also financial self-care is in getting uh, the advice of or education from a financial education expert. So start talking to financial education experts because you'd be surprised. Most people don't talk to these experts because they feel like, oh, well, nobody's going to help me manage $100. Somebody will. There is somebody who says, let me help you now, right? Let me help you where you are so I can work with you over the next 12 months. And that $100 turns into $10,000. And now we have money to diversify even more. So regardless of where you are, and you can start with like going to your bank sometimes, your bank has to if you want financial advice and education from them, they got to give you information anyway because you're a customer, right? But look for um, blogs, look for groups on Facebook, go on LinkedIn and look for communities of financial educators who start with a small amount of money. Google financial education or financial advisors for um, under $10,000. Like Google that until you find the resource. Also, financial self-care is celebrate smart financial decisions. I want you to celebrate your smart financial decisions. So if after you've organized your money and created a plan for your money and you've stolen for your, yourself and in that seven days or that 14 days or that 30 days, you hit your metrics, your money is organized, you operated according to plan, you didn't cancel your automatic deductions when you were stealing from yourself to put into other celebrate that I want you to treat yourself to something very small that's still within the budget maybe you get a dessert maybe you you know a glass of wine maybe you just have a conversation where you're sharing with someone like I did this and I'm proud of me if you're in a mentorship group drop it in there this is what I accomplished this week like financial self care but we have to create the habit of prioritizing um 
having healthy conversations that make us feel good, feel empowered and feel motivated around money specifically. That's good. That's good. Uh, are y'all taking notes? Good. Good. Yeah, you know, this is, this is like some life changing stuff, man. And, uh, I am, I'm not a financial expert. I don't necessarily consider even this podcast, a financial literacy podcast. They try to jump us into the, put us in the, bucket of financial literacy and it's not we teach entrepreneurship but uh this these are some things like a lot of stuff i was learning at the cheesecake factory and this has started to improve my relationship with money um and one of the things i live by and this concept changed my life and it was raise your zero this concept absolutely changed my life uh, someone asked me one day they said you know when what does it mean when you're broke? I said, well, I don't have anything. And he said, well, that's your zero. Your zero is nothing. Your zero is zero. We don't have anything. You're broke, right? Right? Yes. But he said, your zero should be a thousand dollars. He said, you should save a thousand dollars to where you start getting down to your last thousand. You say, I am what? Broke. broke. I ain't got it. Somebody asks for money and all you have is a thousand dollars. You're like, Ooh, I ain't got it. But if your zero is zero, when someone asks for something and you have a thousand dollars, you got it. You can help out. Imagine if you had a hundred thousand dollars in your bank account right now, how would you feel? Amazing, right? Relieved. But there are some people, they get nervous. They really get nervous. You wonder, why would a person who has $100 million in the stock market and the stock crashes and they're down to a couple million and they blow their brains out or jump off a bridge when you've got $2 million left? In their mind, zero isn't zero. In their mind, 10 million was zero. Now I have nothing. So if you start raising your zero, the numbers become smaller, meaning if someone's asking you to invest in a thousand dollar course, right now a thousand dollars, just the number might be a lot to you, but if a thousand is your zero and you got more than that, you're willing to put up a thousand because that's not that much money, but you have to raise your zero. So I want y'all to write down and just write it to yourself. What is, what is going to be your new zero? I remember I, I, if it wasn't, Tax time or uh, really just tax time, like refunds, having a thousand dollars was such a luxury. And if I got that thousand, I'm like, woo, it's up. Let's go out. And why would I say that? Because zero is my zero and I got a thousand. It's all the way up. Mm. But once I started getting to that, my first zero was 500. And I'm like, yo, I got to get to 500. And once I get this 500, I'm not going below that. And then it was a thousand. Then it was 10,000. And like, it just, it just continues to go up. So now like I have, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm good, but your zero, my zero now, it's an incredible number where I start getting nervous and I'm like, yo, I, I need to go get some money. And I listen, if I ever, y'all listen, if I ever come into this office and I'm like, yo, we really got to run this bag up. I'm at zero, mm -hmm. but my zero isn't your zero. You understand? So we got to raise that zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that we can stop with six. Is that fair? Maybe this would be six. Unless you say something, I come up with something else. Good. I got a couple, man. Okay, well, we can keep running it. Number six, give back. Part of creating a That's healthy a relationship with money is letting money go. Mm -hmm. Letting money go and seeing that your ability to give to others can create impact that's greater than the value of the money that you actually mm -hmm. let go. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> And what, yeah, you got to mm -hmm. really, I, and you're going to explain this, mm -hmm. but I think so many people miss this. Mm. They just think, would of you it like to take out. it? No, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm enjoying this. This is good. Yeah. Yeah. Give back. Once I started to find causes and situations that I was connected to, I literally found myself 
planning for and working for and creating ways to support those causes that I'm connected to. So um, when Deja was eight years old, we created a business called Totally Like Whatever. Just found that business card the other day, by the way. Mm-hmm. She had a legitimate she made jewelry and wallets and purses out of duct tape. That's lit. It was dope. <laughs> That's hard. It was like dope. It. So we had this business called Totally Like Whatever. And That's she was, a hard name, <laughs> too. I like it. <laughs> because the concept of the business was she made all the She learned how to make stuff out of duct tape. She could make anything. So people, my friends and her, her friends and their parents would always say, can you make me this? Can you make me this? And her response would always be like, I can make whatever you want. So I came up with totally like whatever and she ran with it. Right. She was the kid who just made like totally like whatever. Anyway. Uh So I wanted her to everything that I did wrong with money. I wanted her to do right. And so I would teach her like you've made this money, but we got to give back. So it would start with um, giving when she was really, really young. And you may not remember this. I forget even sometimes when she was really, really young, she had to just take a Christmas gift wrapped unmarked and give it away Mm. she didn't know what gift she was giving away now i knew what gift she was giving away (laughs) right of the options that she would give away but we would take the gift and we would just donate we would drop it off at a women's center because at women's centers there's usually women with children and she had to create this mindset and this habit that If I give one of my presents away, because kids cherish their Christmas gift, if I give my present away, that doesn't stop me from having presents of my own. Mm -hmm. Right? And so that was something that we did. And then eventually, as she started to get older, um, I wanted to move on into helping more people. And so I created an organization called Warm for the Winter. And me, her, and Auntie Bree and Taylor, like my friends, we get together and we buy with our own money, we buy like warm chili from Wendy's. We go and get dozens of cups of chili and we were collecting. I owned a clothing store. My friend owned the, owned the clothing store at the time. We would collect coats and socks and, you know, items to keep you warm for the winter. And we just drive around and give stuff out. But it was important that she was there. And then time went on and her business was growing a little bit. We created the Smart Kids Club. I was creating and we give away backpacks full of stuff. And then I started traveling, giving away backpacks of laptops and school supplies. And I partnered with a friend of mine, Pastor Chris Harris, out in Chicago. And we would do these giveaways. And um, it's not that you're doing it for the feedback that you get. But the feedback that you get makes you want to do it more. Right? It makes you want to do it more. At the time, I wasn't create. I wasn't concerned in the beginning with having a five hundred one c three and making it, you know, a nonprofit. I just wanted to take my money. I was in a position, even when I didn't have a lot. Like we started this when I might have had an extra thousand dollars to my name, and I'm gonna take two hundred dollars and buy all the chili I can buy with that. And we go out, and now even though she stopped investing, I have a very selfless daughter. She would give you her shirt and drive home because she knows that there's more shirts at home. I do the same thing. You do the same thing. I know that I have more. And it's just this mindset. Like, obviously, um, it says that the more you give, the more God will bless you. You will get it back tenfold. But even outside of a spiritual realm, it's purposeful, right? Right. It's purposeful. You get in this habit of give, give, give. I want you guys to give something away. Give a shirt away. When you get home, will there still be enough shirts? That one shirt that you gave away is more valuable to the person that you gave it to than the 25 shirts you still have left at home are are valued for you. Yeah. And I I don't even, the reason why he was like, yo, you want to explain? I can't. I don't even know how it works or why it works. I just know it does. You know it what I mean? Does. Like we can't explain. Can you explain how you put a small seed in the ground and it turns into a tree? Who, who can explain that? You know what I mean? But it just does. So yeah, for sure, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, my next one, very short, simple, one word. Get ready. It's powerful. Are we ready? Best one in the list. 
cook. <laughs> just cook. You got food at home. <laughs> just cook. Yeah, I when I was when I was living by myself, we cook. Mm -hmm. I just cook. Yo, there's so like it's so easy. First off, a Chick Fil A, a good experience at Chick Fil A, twelve bucks. But you do it so often, and now with the advent of credit cards and debit cards, you don't see the money slowly slipping away. I'd imagine that $26,000 that I have on my Acorn account would probably be at Chick-fil-A, or they, it probably is at Chick-fil-A, or it is at this restaurant here or on wings. I've spent tens of thousands of dollars on wings. At least. Not tens of thousands. No, single, I would cook. Then I, I started realizing this. Man, I can cook, and I might spend $20 at the grocery store on whatever, and that food is going to last me a couple days. And uh, if I, and this was maybe in my move, and I don't recommend my little sisters in here to fall for this trick, okay? <laughs> <laughs> but I would definitely get some groceries and we cook or I'd say, Hey, I'm trying to learn how to cook. Can you help me? And that's the date. And we just so happened to eat the food in front of the TV. You know what I mean? The Netflix. It was, I wasn't trying to Netflix and chill. but I'm telling you cooking will save you thousands and that thousands that you uh, save on cooking, uh, is money that you can invest in a business that will turn into millions. So it's these little things. So my one point is cook. Okay. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily the best one on the list, but we can make it really good if we say. Um, no, I like cook. Here's the thing. It might not. So <laughs> one of these. So one of these. Right. I like cook. Will be the best one on the list. For somebody. For you. For mm -hmm, sure. Mm -hmm. And some of y'all don't need to do all of them. There needs to be one that resonates with you. Like, okay, I'm going to organize. Let me just get a handle on where I am. Mm -hmm. It's not making more money. It's not paying off debts. But let me just see how much I got. Or one might be, you know what? I'm so tied to money that I can't give it. So I'm going to start putting seeds in the ground because you can't grow anything if you don't put seeds in the ground. So my thing was, will be, I'm going to start putting seeds in the ground or mm -hmm. like having the envelopes that joint changed my life. Changed. But I still was going to say, I appreciate cook, but can we just say limit extra spending? Nah, cook. It's he more like my nerves. gets the people going. You know what I mean? It was more, it was like a build up for okay, this one word. Okay, okay, Then mine is. Oh my gosh. Stay inside. Yo, every day that I go out, it costs me a couple hundred dollars. Like if I'm leaving the house and yeah. I'm out in these streets for a couple hours, I didn't spend a couple hundred dollars Here's easy. the thing though. My wife don't go out. That's why I just said stay inside. But, but she's still. Oh my gosh. The, the Amazon, Amazon door DoorDash. Dash. Yo, first, okay, here, maybe, maybe here's one. If you have a problem with money, remove apps from your phone. That's a good nine. That's a good eight. This what is an I eight. This is eight. You did seven. That's a good Remove one. apps from your phone. That means get rid of the DoorDash, get rid of the Uber Eats, get rid of the Amazon. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't ever have to buy from these sites, what it means is we're making it more I difficult. Can't give Deja the mic because she has <laughs> something to say. <laughs> Miss, I don't ever want to be on camera. Has a lot to say about this. You are one to talk. I am. <laughs> I am. Oh. Every day there's an Amazon order that pops up on my phone from her account. <laughs> Remove it. Day. Remove it. Where's your phone? I didn't. For no reason am I removing it. Uh, I didn't say that was my struggle. That's that's not my struggle. Yeah. And I got money. <laughs> no, um, seriously, remove the. And also, I said, if you have a problem with money, mm -hmm. okay, if you have a problem with money, which I no longer have a problem with money, but if you have a problem with money, seriously, remove the apps from your phone. Get rid of DoorDash. Get rid of Uber Eats. Get rid of Amazon. Why? Because this little device right here 
makes poverty too accessible. Mm. That's a bar. That's a bar. That's good. This advice makes poverty too accessible. You're on here and you are scrolling social media. You're scrolling social media and you're being enticed by other people's habits what they possess their possessions, their lifestyle. What do you want to do? You want to go buy it. In the meantime, you're getting, uh, uh, what is it? You're, you're losing focus on ads. You get these ads and you're like, oh, let me go buy it. Now on social media, you can just shop right through the app. This device will control your money habits and control how much money you have to do other things. Now, if you say, you know what? I am only going to access my Amazon and shop from my desktop. I'm only going to order Uber Eats from my desktop. These things are no longer on my phone. For many of us, when you're out and about and you're thinking about making this decision on the whim, you don't have access to your laptop. Some of you are too lazy to open your laptop. Like there's a, there's a, there's some filter between you. There are other steps between you and that computer, you and that desktop, right? And so maybe on your way to go grab the computer, you stop at the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't really need it. Maybe on the way to go grab that computer, you see the other packages that you hadn't opened yet. I don't need it. Create some space between you and these apps. I got a, I got a hack, and this this really helped me. And this, I'm gonna save somebody some money right now. Y'all ready? Especially if you got an iPhone. Okay, pull out your phone. Hit the little settings button. Hit settings. I'm going to. I'm really going to change some lives right now. Okay, y'all there? At the top, you see where it says your name? It says Apple ID, iCloud, all that kind of stuff. You see it? Click that. Now go down to that subscriptions button. Click that. That shows you all of the descriptions that are automatically. Okay, so first off, leave that morning meetup app alone. Okay, that one, that one belongs there. Okay. <laughs> but there's, there's a bunch of um, um, apps, subscriptions that you have right now that you can click on it and hit cancel subscription. How many of y'all see something that you can cancel right now? I promise I have like 20. There it is. Yes, tomorrow. There Tell it me is. what to do again. Anybody? Settings, apps. So go to settings. Uh -huh. at, at the very top, you'll see your name. Uh -huh. And then go to subscriptions. It's the fourth one down, I think. Subscriptions. You'll see all the things that are, that are hitting you either by the year, the month, some other week. So you can click some. And un unsubscribe. <gasps> you can click it and hit unsubscribe. Oh my god! I'm so it. glad I saw this. I see a couple. I'm paying for this, bro. This joint was a game changer. Somebody showed me because we. Ooh, yeah. Someone said hit Apple up and they will refund you three months back. Yep. So let me. I have a problem doing that. I won't do that, right? And I won't do that because I run membership programs and I didn't create a business model that makes it convenient for people to say, oh, I willingly opted into purchasing this product from you, but just because I chose not to use it, now three months later, retroactively, I want a refund. I don't, I don't want to breathe that into my business, so mm. I don't do it to other businesses. I am just going to take this L that I've had these subscriptions that I chose, that I opted in for, I said yes to, mm -hmm. and I'll cancel it today. Yep. That joins the game. I'm doing it right now. First of all, why have I been paying for this dating for black singles app? And I've been single for a year. Okay. I ain't even logged into this app. And this particular app, I had to have been paying for for years because I had this mm -hmm. before my last relationship, which was almost four years. Had no idea. Game changer. Cancel subscription. Yep. Confirm. And it was yeah. it was about to bill October 15th. Canceled it. And I'm on the paid plan for Bumble. Bumble don't be having no for real action going on. Let me get on the free version. You like were, you were invested, weren't you? I am all the way in there. And I, oh my God. You mean my people watching wasn't free? And it was set to bill September 22nd. You literally just saved me. Uh, this bills. You literally just saved me $125 annually. And let me tell you what this means. So 
I just found my condo. Mm-hmm. Congrats. Thank you. I'm moving into a condo I'm renting. What's the address? <laughs> I'm renting uh, the condo that I want. And for all of you anti-renters, I do own property. Um, and so I'm in there yesterday. And the there's like first come, first serve parking. That's like $50 a month. And you can park wherever. I'm not a first come first serve type of person. I want reserve parking. Mm-hmm. And they tell me that the monthly fee for the res- the the fee rather for the reserve parking is $125 per car. Well, she got legs. Like youthful legs. No, nah, but I'm saying you got so you got more than one car. You got two cars, right? I, so some of my cars are going to stay where I stay now. I still have access to the parking. That's ghetto. I still own a unit there. Oh, yeah, because you were, okay, I was about to say, like, dang, okay, that's weird. Yeah, like, <laughs> that's weird, but okay. So, yes, I only need one reserve space. I just saved myself from being billed in this next 30 days, $125, and the space cost $125. Mm-hmm. Look at yeah. that trade off, not going into further debt. Th- that's another one. You just, that, that deserves its own number. One applause, guys. And it's not just about check your subscriptions. It's going to be conduct a regular. And by regular, I would say at least monthly conduct a monthly financial audit. Sit down with your freaking everywhere that you got money because your Apple Pay has one way that you spend money. Your cash app has another way that you spend money. Then you got your bank account. You got these credit cards. You just got stuff coming from everywhere, right? Sit down and conduct a financial audit monthly. Go into your score. So what are we doing when we're uh, conducting a financial audit? We're checking our subscriptions on our phones, checking phone subscriptions, right? That's one thing that you're doing. Thanks, David, for that. That was really, really good. Um, Then I want you to go into your PayPal and check what automatic deductions you're checking for automatic deductions. And I'm just going to give you a couple of ideas to jog your memory. You are looking at your PayPal. You are looking at your Zelle. Who do you have on auto Zelle payments? Um, you are, did I cancel that Zelle hey, for your rent? On, I didn't know you was on Instagram. I just followed you. You posted that? Oh, I didn't know you was on Instagram. That's good. I'm sorry. You Did, did I stop your automatic Zelle deposit to you for your rent? Okay. Um, you follow me back, too. So. You weren't following Shans? I wasn't following her. But I didn't know Shady. Her. Okay, so I want you to, you're checking your subscriptions that you're connected to on your phone. You are checking subscriptions that you're connected to on your laptop. You are checking things like automatic uh, payments that you have coming out of your Zelle, automatic payments that you have maybe connected to your Apple Pay, uh, your PayPal, things like that. You are also looking for um, payments from all of your credit cards. Make a list of your credit cards. You already did that because David talked about organizing. So you know what credit cards you have. Do a monthly audit of your credit card statements. What auto payments do you have coming from there, right? Go through that mail that's been piled up on the counter for the last couple of weeks and make sure there's nothing that's auto billing right there. Check your debit card accounts, your banking accounts, and make sure there's nothing that's adding up there, right? That should cover the gist of it. However you're spending money, however you receive money, I want you to audit all of those things. Now, the second part is of the audit is taking a look at um, some of your larger purchases and figuring out if there's a way to lower your payment. So do you, you know, is it right now? Are you paying for something? Let's say you're a part of a membership community. Let's say you're a part of a gym uh, membership and you're paying $150 right now for your gym membership, but you notice that um, you you notice that they're giving memberships out right now for ninety nine dollars. Can you get take some time to get on the phone and say, hey, I notice you're giving a lesser rate right now. Can I get that lesser rate? Well, a lot of times they're going to tell you no. It's for new customers only, but there's no cancellation penalty associated to your account. So why not just cancel and re sign up and get the lower rate? These are things that you can do that are ethical financial practices that save you money that's good that's good uh i mean i think i think i think we got a good handle. so we're at nine you got to just give 10 i don't like ending on a nine okay just. i got you um so number 10 is um set a budget set a budget like a spending budget 
Yo, so me and Milan, um, me and Milan have become really close over the last year, right? And shout out to you for that, actually, because you got me booked for an event where I interviewed Milan. Right. Shout out to Milan of Milano de Rouge. You got me booked for an event where I interviewed Milan and we hit it off instantly, right? right. That was a year ago. And we started hanging out because both of us are real like, I don't know. I don't know. Anywho. What does I don't know mean? Like, you know, welcoming when you're really busy, especially as a woman, and um, you have to live your life in a way that you got to be careful about the relationships that you create and spend people that you spend a lot of time with. So both of you are just single. That's your way of saying, I don't know. Yo, real talk. No, is that? No, I'm just saying you, you're careful about who you date and we're careful. When I met Milan, I wasn't single. Oh, actually I was. Um, no, I'm just trying to explain. I don't know. I don't know. And you said we got to be careful who we... We are careful about who we connect with closely. And I will drop kick you. What? You say it all the time now. Yeah, I am single. Yeah. I'm very I'm single. Trying, I'm and so is she. Man, and you mad at In me. In fact, See? we just... A little off subject. We just went on this six-day sabbatical. I didn't even get to talk about that. We'll do that um, next week. But we went on the six-day sabbatical. And one of the things that Milan and I are committed to is being intentional about... Uh, making ourselves available to date mm. being intentional about making ourselves available because sometimes I'll post it. Sometimes I want it. Like I have moments when it's like, you know what? It would be nice to go on a date and blah, blah, blah. And then you get the attention and, it, and you're like, eh, maybe next month. I tell my daughter every single month. No, for real this month, I'm going to be intentional about dating. How much money does that the man have to have? Okay. So let me stay focused. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> we realized that um, neither of us operate by a budget. And so you have like, you realize your friends, no matter how much money they make, and she makes really big money, right? Um, she said to me on the last day of the trip, Donnie, we need to create a budget because we out there just spending frivolously. Mm. Frivolously, She's like, you want to stay another day? I'm like, yep, let's stay another day. We go the whole day. Don't check the cost for the extra day. You know, booking at like a really nice resort day of can get a little pricey. Mm. We're just room service this extra that we're door dashing every day. And Milan is like, yo, we need to get on a budget. I'm like, people who make that kind of money still think in terms of budget. <laughs> and she's like, I need to, you know, I need to, her company is worth like a hundred million dollars right now. Right. And she's like, I need to be on a budget. And let me tell you this. I used to, because I grew up having to be on a budget. And when I say grow up, I'm talking about like young adult because I had to budget every single dollar that I spent. And I had to be so careful. Once I started making money, like the word, budget to me just became like a curse word, right? Like I don't budget. I just make more money. And I still believe that I just go and make more money and the budget gets bigger, yeah. but we still have to honor the money that we have, regardless of how little or how big it is, how big, how little or how a lot it is. We still have to honor the money that we have and don't just be out here reckless spending, like just on, like create a budget. And it's more about, committing to the discipline of sticking yeah. to the budget than it is about giving yourself the budget. For sure. If that makes sense. And just some steps in creating the budget. The budget needs, I think first we just have the big line items that we know we spend on. So you're, you might have a budget for food and this is my, and monthly may be too far out, but this is my weekly allocation for food is my food budget. Or um, if you say I'll give myself $5 a day, for or or $3 a day for going out. You might save it so that in a month you got $15, you can treat yourself to Chick-fil-A. Like whatever the number is, you need to have some sort of targeted budget. This budget is for food. This budget is for leisure. This budget is for clothes for the month. This budget is for maintenance. And you might realize, okay, I don't have the maintenance budget this month, so I'm gonna just wear a ponytail. I mean, that's right. real talk. I mean, and, and the thing is, it's possible and we get by, we do it. 
Like when I went through my period of of working, rebuilding myself financially after losing everything, like I went from someone who made a, a really great amount of income as an employee at that time um, to making hardly anything. And I remembered real quickly how to style my hair the way that I want to style <laughs> my hair. I, I, I remember really easily how to go and buy the bottle of nail polish that was three dollars and ninety nine cents instead of the fifty dollar at that time, uh, you know, uh, gel manicure or whatever it was. And now we get into these habits where you get your hair done once a week. You got to get your nails done every two weeks and this and that and this and that. I remember in 2021, I was in a relationship at that time and we used to just buy food. It didn't matter who bought the food. We're buying food. We're eating good. We're going out. It don't matter. You got it. I got it. Whatever. And we sat down one day and calculated how much money we had spent like in the last 90 days and we had spent like a combined 6500 to eight thousand dollars a month it's crazy on food they ain't good too mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta- yeah because i don't i don't have a relationship with like fast food a whole lot anymore you know like whereas i used to be able to back in the day do wendy's all the time like mm-hmm. those wendy's value meals used to hit the spot yeah. now i'm appalled yeah, and it's not even that. Uh, not nah, because you still eat church's chicken. I knew you were but gonna gear your the, way up to say that. And sometimes it's I not eat Popeyes even, chicken. Yeah, you know, sure. and Popeyes goes crazy. Popeyes is busting. I I'm taking Popeyes chicken sandwich over Chick Fil A every every day of the week. time. Every day of the week. Y'all, I don't even. The we're not gonna say that. We so, can't. We can't. What he's about to say? Some racist. For no reason, uh, Shans, I'm not so anyway, a racist. No, no, no. I was just gonna say I don't understand what the hype is. I eat I eat a chicken salad from Chick Fil A every single day. The reason that I eat a chicken sandwich, a chicken salad from Chick Fil A every single day is because it's three minutes away from where yeah. I live. There yeah. is no Popeyes in my neighborhood, right? But if Popeyes had a chicken salad, it would oh, be man. game over. I don't understand oh, the hype over Chick Fil A's chicken. Popeyes is special. Let's focus, okay? Oh, so, and y'all might see the number 6,500. It's not just me eating or you eating. When you're invited, you don't want to eat by yourself, so you might invite some people. Right. Right? And now it's like four of y'all or six of y'all, and you take the bill. Mm -hmm. And I I feel somewhat obligated sometimes. So much so, we were in L.A., and it was a bunch of us that came from uh, the BET Awards. And it's, it's a bunch of us there. So I do what I do and I just take out my card. And Donnie was like, no, 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 we're not doing that. We're going to split it. Mm-hmm. And that felt really good because sometimes I just feel obligated to, you know what I mean? I, maybe I, I feel crazy saying, all right, well, how much did you eat? How much did your plate? How much is yours? But I was like, nah, we all just, because it was couples there too. So it's like, yo, no, we're going to do it. We're going to split it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Now, don't get, don't get in the habit of that. Um, Not where I'm involved. You know what I mean? I watch his back when there's other people with good money sitting at the table. And I'm like, why do you have to volunteer to pay all the time? Put that down. Now, if it's just us, you know what I mean? Keep doing with the the gentleman stuff the <laughs> I would feel I would feel as obligated as you need to but no so y'all for real real talk like budgeting is important I remember a period of two and a half years where um, we would play this game the friend group would go out to eat lunch dinner breakfast whatever four people six people 12 people 15 people doesn't matter like you hear me say that our combined spending was like sixty five hundred dollars minimum on food But there were times when the bill was just $5,000, one bill. And these guys are playing credit card roulette. And credit card roulette is just you taking your credit card, giving it to the waiter, and they're putting it behind their back, mixing it up. And whatever card they pick first, you're out. Whatever card they leave, they're left standing with, that's the person who pays the bill. And I always remember the story of Neo getting stuck with like a $5,000 bill in New York they're in New York. Nehemiah, yeah, like half a burger. Yeah, <laughs> Nehemiah Davis. He had just come from an event. He had already eaten, and he's meeting his friends at the restaurant. They're out. They're at a fancy restaurant. Neo sits down. He orders burger and fries. He said his meal was like $20, 25 right? Water. 
The bill comes, they all decide to play cre- credit card roulette. The rule was at that time, if you're sitting at the table and you're a man, your credit card goes in. Women, we tried to throw our credit card in, they weren't having it, right? If you're a man, you're sitting at the table, the credit card goes in. So Neil puts his credit card in, like all I had was burgers and fries, I'm good, you know, I know it's not gonna be. Anyway, Neil gets stuck with a $5,000 bill and all he had was a $25 burger and fries that he didn't finish that he did not finish because he had just (laughs) come from eating food and he didn't think twice about it it was like oh man i got the bill but it was like ha 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 ha, take it pay it right that was 2021 though so that was through that period that two (laughs) two and a half year period today all 20 all all 2023 I ain't heard nobody play credit card roulette. I ain't, yeah. seen, it on, I ain't seen it on the gram. I ain't seen nobody online. I ain't with seen it. no credit card roulette in the last uh, couple months. So all I'm saying is, I think um, budgeting. We got to make budgeting cool yeah. or whatever because silently we just stop playing. Everybody's like, "Yeah, I'll take my check. Mm-hmm. I'll take my check." You know what? Um, let me also say this. So I know that you have a habit when we're in groups of pulling out your card, um, pulling out your card. We're we're good. We're wrapping up real quick. No, no, I was saying turn it off. Oh, you have a habit of paying for everybody, right? When I am in my friend group, I have a habit of paying for everybody. And lately in the last couple of months, like I've started to just request my check. (laughs) Because what about the restaurants that don't split checks? I'll pay for it. Um, because make a post people there. have people yeah, have like started to like make you feel like you're cheap, you're broke, you're rude, you're something. If you are sitting, oh, I don't go places with people who split bills. Don't go out with me. Because here's the thing: I don't mind paying the bill. I mind the entitlement. I don't mind paying the bill. I do mind the entitlement. Like if you're not even reaching, I'll take my check. Like if you're like if you're not even reaching when she sits the check down, I'm immediately going to say, oh, I'm sorry. Can we have separate checks? If you just think that I'm going to pay it because I make the most money, like because I pursue goals that allow me to earn at a higher level doesn't make me responsible for your meal. It doesn't make me responsible for our time together. Now, I actually enjoy, I told you that uh, gift giving is my love language. So I don't mind treating my friends to stuff most times, but I also like to be treated. And I also like for people to at least create the behavior physically that they're going to reach for the bill. And um, that's the other thing that I noticed a lot, like, when me and Milan were just on the sabbatical, we would get together to eat every single time. And she quick to be like, two checks, two checks, two checks. And I love that. She because doing that? For what? I wonder what, how you feel two, that way. Hey, two checks. Two, um, and then it got two. to the point where it's like, we'll just split the check down the middle because she's like, no, Donnie, you reach for the check a lot. I reach for the check a lot. I don't want you to feel obligated. I'm like, oh my God, thank you. Cause I don't want you to feel obligated. Like it's just not fair if all she's ordering is French fries and water. Ooh. And then here I come with three appetizers and entree and a glass of wine. That's why she's saying, but that didn't happen. We, we literally <laughs> ordered. Two, it'll be two. She had we literally that. ordered the same thing. We literally <laughs> ordered the same thing most of the time. But what, but where it comes from is I don't want people to feel entitled to me pulling out my card because I make the most money. And it was a mutual respect. Like, I'm so glad it takes the pressure off because we're already on this trip. I don't want to have to budget to pay for 100% of her meals. And she doesn't want to have to budget to pay for 100% of my meal. That's another $2,000 mm-hmm. just on food. Uh, but I like how so she check. said it. She said, what'd you do to, I don't want you to feel obligated to pay for it. Mm-hmm. I like that she did that. Mm-hmm. Cause it's really saying, I don't feel obligated to pay for it. Mm-hmm. But the way it comes out is I don't want you to feel obligated to pay for it. So don't worry about it. I know mm-hmm. you take care of my, I'll take my, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. I'm about to do that. Yeah. I'm doing that. Yeah. What was that line? Run that line by me one more time. Yes. But in other news, before we wrap up, uh, to answer your question, we are both single. And um, I don't know that there is an income requirement 
anymore. Mm. You got to have motion, though. I don't know if I ever had an income requirement. Uh, I didn't. When? When have you only seen me, like, I always hit, like, be like, he fine. I'll never be like, do he have money? He fine. What's up with him? Hey, boy. He fine, but actually pursuing something, there has been some little, an unwritten requirement. No. If it's not written, it ain't a requirement. It That's just isn't. crazy to say. I, it's not. Like, I literally, because I wrote it out. I wrote out what the requirements are. And um, for both of us, because that was your question, it's more to do with the motion that you have. Like, what are you doing? I hate when you get on this. What internet. you got going I hate on? When you get on Donald Trump's internet and you start talking. First of all, I'm on Beyonce's about, internet. Yeah. Okay, I'm on I'm on Beyonce's internet, and um, let me upgrade you. <laughs> Partner, let me upgrade you. you be so happy I'm a sugar this. mama. Be so happy on the. I'm not a sugar podcast. mama though, by any means. No, of course, I would love someone. I would love to date somebody. And ultimately be with somebody. I think many women would who um, who earns at my level or higher. I would love that, but it's not like I'm not gonna overlook somebody just because they make five hundred thousand dollars a year or two hundred thousand dollars a year. <laughs> Why are we laughing? Here's the requirement. <laughs> <laughs> there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. A requirement. No, 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 no. Or even. 70,000. So me and Milan were having this conversation. You taking you taking 70? I can take lit 70. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Let me tell you what I mean. These are the answers you're supposed to give on camera. So I'm going to leave you alone. No, seriously. Deja, Deja. A hundred percent. One thousand percent. I'm lying? Not telling the truth at all. With the exception of my most recent ex. What rich man have you ever seen me date? What are is something wrong? I'm not about to name their names. No, 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 no. Don't name a name. I don't see you date people really, but either way, you're not. So gonna, her opinion I is see you invalid. Date people. But your lifestyle, you, you won't be able to go with the set. So you're basing it off of my lifestyle, not off of something that I've done. On who right. you are right now. I but I can base it off of some things you've done. Like? Donnie, do you want to go through this right now? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, stand on it. Okay, you want what you want. Stand no, on listen it. Listen to me. I, I'm not going to date someone who is broke or broken in mindset for sure. Now, I might date someone. We were we were having a conversation, and the school teacher with 70K might be able to, you know what I mean, if he got his own motion doing something and I can turn him up, I will help him make more money. I so can work with right that. Now. I can, I can, I, and I'm not saying I can marry that person in that condition. I'm saying that, and let me tell you why. It's not because of the money that he makes. It's because I have tried, like, seriously dating somebody who made significantly less than me, and it's more of an issue with that man than it is with me. Like, $70,000, you can afford to take me on dinner dates. We can go out and we can have a nice time. And that's really on a level of dating. That's all I require. I don't require you to pay my bills and all of that stuff. Most Many people couldn't pay my bills. Like, you know what I mean? So I don't require, I just want dates and fun and flowers. And you can do that depending on how you live your life with 70K. However, when I tried dating that far apart, like, it was a constant conversation brought up by him. Like, I just feel like, you know, why me? I just feel like, you know, um, you could have chosen somebody who could do so much more for you. Sir, I chose you. I need you to stand in that. I need you to be confident in the fact that I chose you, but I don't want to sit around like now because we keep having this conversation about how little money you make compared to me. Now I feel like maybe I can't order the appetizer because I don't want to. I don't want to make him feel bad. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do Maybe I don't buy a new bag because he couldn't buy it. And I know deep down inside he wants to buy. Like, I don't want to have to alter what I'm accustomed to to cert- to satisfy somebody else's um, ego in a way that makes them feel confident. Like, I'm going to affirm you and assure you, but I can't defeat the mental enemy that you've created for yourself. That's a really, really good answer. 
you get on my nerves. No, it was it was a really really. It's good really answer. the truth though. It's really 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 the truth. Let me tell you something. If you can find you a man who is on his way, and I don't mean on his way, and everything's written on paper, and it depends on what age you are. Like my daughter, she's in her twenties. She, the, the two of them, they can find somebody who's on their way on paper. Like I got it written down. You've got time, right? She don't have any responsibilities and stuff. You got time to grow with somebody from that level. But when you hit your 30s and maybe you have kids or you have a business and you got things going on, like now you got to start looking at, is this person going to be able to provide for the family? Is this person going to be able to provide the lifestyle that I want my children to have? Then you hit your 40s and it's like, look, now I got a lot of bills. Now we're planning for retirement. Can you contribute to that? Can we travel? Can we have the freedom and blah, blah. If you can find someone in alignment with the level that you are on and grow with them, that is the most ideal situation. It's not most ideal to find the complete person. Good. All right. Just you get we'll on my we'll No, 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 no. We'll end it with this question. We'll end it with this question. Okay. <laughs> we're going to end it with this question. I'm not even going to ask a question. I'm just going to give a scenario. Okay. What? Well, first of all, 10 ways to create a healthy relationship with money. <laughs> yes. Because you're trying to set me up. No, I'm not. You're, you're trying to set me up for the clip. No, I'm not. I'm, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. I Yo, promise. this is what David does. He no, asks I'm me not. these totally unrelated questions. He sets me up. He never puts his two cents in it. I always end up taking one for the team. And the clip, the, 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 the risky clip is always going to be me. No, 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 no. I'm just, I'm just asking this question. And this Reese, if this ends up being a clip, no, it's not going to be. A, it's not going to be. It's not going to be that bad, because okay, I'll change the scenario a little bit. The man has money, and they're financially literate. Okay, they understand money. They have a bunch of money, but they decide not to spend it. You go on a date, you pull up, it's you and him, pull up the valet. However, he's driving a Toyota Corolla. Keeps it clean. You hop out the passenger side to valet, and there's a line of people. And they say, Donnie Wiggins. How do you feel? I feel fine. No, you don't. I do there's because some anxiety. I was- there's some anxiety for the aesthetic. I for just, the aesthetic. I did this already. Even if the person makes a bunch of money, you the feel person, away. A person that I was dating made a bunch of money, and they drove a... 2010, 2008 or 2010 Ford Mustang regularly. But that was an old school. That was a lit little thing. It was like, not. I'm, it not was, talking, I'm talking about a financially it, it was, responsible it was a, This is a financially responsible person. This was a vehicle that it needed a paint job severely. You know what I mean? It was It was old. It wasn't old school. <laughs> It was just an old vehicle. I know what you're that, talking about. He's yeah. in the cars and it, it was lit when I saw it. I was like, oh, that's awesome. No, it wasn't. No, you, you're talk, you, were, you were talking about the the Mustang that was purchased that you was new. You don't have to answer it. Anyway, all I'm saying is if There's I know, I'm so Donnie confident. Wiggins. That's compare, that's that's the same as if I'm walking walking out of the house and I'm busted. Yeah. My hair is busted. I got on wrinkled clothes because all I wanted to do was run out and go pick up my dry cleaning. That's different. On my way to pick up my dry cleaning, I'm like, you know what? Let me call and get this takeout real quick. That's different. Let me run and get this takeout. I you grab this takeout so and I run into 15 people. You know why that's so different? Because you're still Donnie Wiggins. And I'm still Donnie Wiggins running. getting out of the Toyota yeah, Corolla. You you want a man that compliments your aesthetic but he do though babe you don't have to compliment me through your vehicle like i, mean, I don't i don't need that i just like i, I, I don't drove. i don't think it's important but i know there are certain things that may be important to donnie wick so things that are important to me are not cars like i want to be able to travel it's not about the car it's there's a certain one lifestyle and a certain aesthetic that i but think my lifestyle want. so here's the thing anybody who and you feel you deserve i think I do deserve it, but I don't deserve it in the means of hopping out of his nice car. Listen, y'all. Sure, that looks nice, but I would rather travel. I want to travel, and I don't want to have a budget when Regard- I pick my hotel. Regardless of I want flowers. I want dinner. What kind Drive of car? With- huh? What kind of car? Olive Garden. Unlimited salad. Go crazy. Them salads at Olive Garden lit. They, they lit. Let's get it. Bread sticks, too? See, that's what I'm saying. I... I'm so glad that I don't... Yo, bro, I wear the same clothes all the time. I don't have to impress nobody. I do. 
I only got a, it's only a few social proof t-shirts and I just rotate and them. you wear them all the time. It's not the same one, but I have like a bunch of them like Batman in my closet. It's like that. <laughs> but I don't have to like do anything. I feel you, my closet, one of my, one of my closets, nothing but hoodies. Yeah, but you got another whole bedroom that's a closet. So anyway, um, uh, it, regardless of who you are, what your status is, what your job is, what you drive, what you do for a living, DM Donnie. Don't She's open. do that She's necessarily. Open. She's looking for somebody to upgrade. I am. I, I can upgrade She's looking a for lot somebody of people. To upgrade. I am looking for, I, I desire someone to partner on their you mission got, with, on their journey. My age limit? Yeah. You have a wife and three kids. Wow. That's so nice. Y'all together? Y'all sitting mad close. close. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, don't, don't move now. And then she tapped him on the knee. Yo, and I got a, I, I have a cup. I have some options for you. Do you? Yeah, but I just. Why you ain't put it out there? Because you're capping right now. And the other conversations we've had. Okay, but you, you know, be you changing trying to, your ways after your sabbatical? No. Maybe that's You it. be trying. So here's the thing. You be trying to put me onto options of people who are like, um, there's certain industries that I won't date in. Like what? I don't date personal trainers. What about retail? <laughs> yeah, we need to end this episode, man, because I've, I've had enough. Do they own the retail store? No, they are the ma they manage it. Oh, that's possible. Now, but so for me, <laughs> ah, yo, I'm looking at Deja, and Deja's like, uh, we understand. We're gonna let her live on this one. Yeah, no, listen. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, here's yeah. the thing. I don't, I'm not interested in dating the retail store, the, the Macy's manager, if he's committed to being a Macy's manager no, 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 and no. retiring. He, he might have another business on the side. He's got ambitious. If he's ambition. ambitious and the business is generating some revenue and I believe in the mission and I know like, oh, I see exactly what needs to happen here and I can help. Yes. He makes 40. His business does 20. He's got motion. He's replaced 50% of his income. That's lit. Mm -hmm. How long has he had the business? Can I help? Do I believe in it? Yeah. Like he can't have like he can't be the he can't oh be the retail gosh. store manager I'm and done. own like the I'm record label with trash artists. Like, hey, listen, nah. thank y'all for tuning in. Please uh, subscribe, Reese. like. Okay, we got a Reese. couple links below that you need to click Very on. Very clearly, we've given so much value in this episode. Sometimes our clips make people forget. That we're a business podcast that drops gems. Yes. So we need to make sure that this podcast is promote. We can do the fun stuff, but definitely highlight these 10 steps. <laughs> we're going straight to the end of this episode to pull the clips. <laughs> we're going straight to the Donnie said she ain't dating nobody. Nah, but you're real political with your answer. So you, there's nothing we can really get you on. So other than lying, but. <laughs> Yo, like, subscribe. Thank you. Share this with somebody, okay? I yeah. am attracted to energy, and most people got stinky energy. I'll see y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs> if you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.